Hey, beautiful humans. Thank you for joining me on my first episode on Creative Street. Episode one, I want it to be a bit about me, um, just so you guys can get to know me, right? Like, who am I um, and why creativity? Why did I choose this topic? Um, so for those of you that don't know me, my name is Stephanie Escoto. Um, I am born and raised in Miami. I have a Cuba mom and a Honduran dad. I am bilingual. I speak, think, read, write in Spanish and English. Um, full disclosure, there are going to be times where uh, something's going to come out in Spanish. And I'm sorry for those that don't understand. It's just that's how my schemas are, right? Um, there's some things that when you grow up in a specific type of culture, whatever, that may be and you learn something in one language it just it's ingrained in you in that way and so it's kind of hard to translate and sometimes translations don't really um make sense <laughs> um unless yeah it they just don't um as you can tell I'm a bit nervous I don't number one I don't tend to be vulnerable I don't tend to open up um with just anybody um let alone this right like I talk to myself all the time it's not about talking to myself or to you guys um it's just being honest and being open and and kind of just filming myself in what I consider an intimate moment right um I don't I have no problem talking to myself it's the only way I feel like we can actually work some things out sometimes right um and who knows you better than yourself well if you don't know yourself, I recommend you start doing some self-exploration. That's no judgment. It's just, I do believe that we all need to kind of know ourselves um, in an intimate level, right? Not just surface level, not what I like and don't like, but being honest and what it is that you want out of life. <clears throat> okay, so that being said, um. So I've always been a creative, right? Um, I consider myself a creative, uh, just so you have an idea of what I mean by that is I have taught myself in life a lot of things. Um, so for instance, I taught myself Photoshop and Illustrator. I taught myself GarageBand. Um, I've made songs, I've written raps, which are hilarious. Um, check out Friday's mini sode. I'm not going to rap a song because Lord knows I can't do that. <laughs> I suck at that. Um, but I will word, uh, what's it called? Um, I will rhythmically state a poem that was intended to be a rap, um, in middle school, I did modeling, I've done musicals, I've done plays, um, I learned how to play instruments, uh, like the flute, played piano, I tried to do singing lessons, or I tried, no, I, I did singing lessons, do I still suck? Yeah, I do. Um, and obviously, I paint, I don't think that's a shock to anybody, <laughs> like my Instagrams, are all full of all my paintings i have a website dedicated specifically to sell my paintings um and any other of my um creative abilities that i can help with that's what i mean by creative oh and i write i write short stories i'm working on a book i've been working on a book for years um i'm working on a book written short stories i write poems um so yeah, that's what I mean by a creative. Like it's somebody who just uses tools in life um, to creatively express themselves, whatever that is, right? Um, whatever physical thing or non-physical thing you do to express what's going on in our minds, right? That's a creative, um, at least to me. Um, and even though I'm a creative, and I do a lot of creative things. It's not my passion, right? And I'm just being honest. 
it's not my passion. Creativity, although I express myself in many, many different ways, creativity is not my passion. My passion has always been humans, right? Like, why are we here? Who are we? Um, what does it mean to be human? And why is it that we are... Look, uh, okay, we're unique, okay? I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this with a caveat, though, because it's not unique where, like, oh, we're so significantly different where we're not part of the animal kingdom. Not that way. We are still animals, but we're unique, right? Just like every other animal on this planet, like, we're all unique. We have our unique niches that we take up all animals have unique niches like things that they're specialized in things that they use to their advantage to continue their survival and so on um and so my interest has always lied with well what's the human niche right like what do we because we live everywhere right you can't you can't define us you can't define our niche based on our environment. You can't define our niche based on what we eat um, or not just how we look, right? Like there are other creatures that are kind of similar to us and we're unique in the sense that we live everywhere, right? We live really high up in the mountains in the cold and then as like hot and, you know, scorching weather, um to the rain forces in ecuador like we have a lot of different environments that we can live in um we are omnivores we can eat almost anything um whether we like the taste of it or not but our body is pretty good at digesting certain things um or a lot of things and I mean, we're not the only ones that are by, uh, we're, we're the only ones technic. No, no, we're not even the only ones bipedal because ostriches run on two legs, even though they don't have appendages like us, like our hands. Um, but they're technically bipedal and monkeys can do it for a, not an extensive amount of time, but they can do it and they can walk upright. So what's our niche? What is the human thing, right? And I've spent a lot of time kind of figuring us out or trying to figure us out because I don't think we'll I'll ever get there. Um, I think we're too unique of creatures and we're constantly in change and it's not like evolution has stopped. Like we we are in constant change. So I don't think I'll ever find the real answer to that, but I think I've gotten close. And I want to say that our niche is our ability to create things. It's to obviously use tools and use abstract thinking to creatively come up with ways to solve our problems um, and create problems because, you know, at one point I'll go into an episode about this uh, idea of like good and evil and the relationship between creating something and it being used for good and it being used for evil um but i digress that's going to be future episodes so be on the lookout for those um but to give you an idea i went to i, I graduated from uf the university of florida back in 2016 um, I double majored in psychology and anthropology. I had originally gone there um, to get my psychiatry degree. Um, I wanted to be either a therapist or psychiatrist. I knew that the mental health world um, is really where I wanted to be. Um, it's, it's what's interested me, right? Psychology, the study of the mind. And as someone who is enthralled by humans um and is just very interested in who we are and what we are um it made sense right but as I went through the classes and and I 
I studied more and I read some research papers. I, it didn't feel right, right? Like when you read a psychiatry and a, and a research paper, a therapy research paper, like there were moments where I would read a paper and it was like talking about, oh, this is this is a long time ago, but I remember reading once where it was like, um, and I get it, I get it. It's hard to to conduct the research study with so many variables that go into us. But essentially there was a part in the paper where it's like, you know, uh, variables like culture and social um, economic uh, things are not accounted for, trying to remove confounding variables. I get it. It's very hard to create something that's supposed to generalize these things for all human types with so many variables and so many things that influence who we are. But still, that even it makes even all the more sense. Like, then how could you rely so much on whatever information comes out of that if you're not taking into account so many other variables that are important to what makes us human so I realized that it's it's not my world it is my world but it's not like I I work right now for um for as an office manager for a counseling center um and I love it like anything administrative creating teams and just being able to be a part of that world without necessarily being the therapist or the psychiatrist myself, definitely up my alley, right? Um, but yeah, so when, as I, as I was studying psychology, I started taking more anthropology classes and anthropology has a special heart, a uh, place in my heart because I've always loved archaeology and archaeology is like a sub-branch of anthropology and then it so happens that as I was taking more of these archaeology classes and anthropology classes, like I took anthropology of religion, which was amazing. I love anything having to do with that spirituality and the abstract and our relationship to death and this afterlife. Um, maybe at one point I'll get into it uh, here. Definitely I'll hit upon it metaphorically because I do believe that also plays a big role in our creativity and our ability to create um, is this relationship with death and wanting of remembrance and so on. Um, but yeah, like I started taking those classes and I fell in love with anthropology. And so I decided to double major and I studied humans right? Because anthropology is a study of humans, um, linguistically, culturally, archaeologically, and physi physiologically, so biologically. Um, and I studied psychology, obviously, the study of the mind. Did a beautiful marriage of the two. I've also done um, genetic courses, like uh, after I graduated, I was working at UF, and as a state of employee, as a state of Florida employee, we get free like school credits. Um, so I took um, evolutionary biology, which is like a study essentially of like the genetics and uh, mapping of DNA and how that kind of plays a role and all that good stuff. So yeah, that's it's that's a lot about me. Um, so. Again, you now, like, you may be wondering, like, but Steph, I can see that you have so much passion for humans and, you know, what we are and all of that. Like, look at all this nonsense you've done. Um, so why, why creativity? Why is, why did you make Creative Street? Why are you making Creative Street? Um, and it's simple because why not? We are creatives. I told you that our niche or what I think our niche is, 
is the ability to create things, to creatively resolve problems, to creatively express ourselves. Um, I mean, our physiology kind of says it, our, our hands, fingers, um, our mind and how we see things, how we interpret the world. I think, I think that's our niche. And so this podcast is just a way of exploring that a um, little bit more in depth without focusing too much on scientific approach and more of literal creative approach. Um, I, I'm going to be talking with fellow creatives. I'm going to be talking with people that the use this relationship with the world and this ability to make something that's in their mind into a reality um uh, whatever that reality may be um so and i thought this would be a more practical way right like nobody wants to sit around and read a book on well i've read books on creativity and it's it's a they can be really interesting but i get it I don't know, to add, like, sometimes it can get boring and it can get monotonous. And hopefully this way it becomes a little bit more personal and it can um, trigger something in you, uh, hopefully trigger something in me. And I can get some form of message out there or... I don't even know what message I would be trying to do, to be honest. I don't think it's a message. It's just having conversations with really cool people and just documenting and seeing how many ways we could be really cool. Um, so, yeah. Um, I want this to be fun. Um, I want it to be meaningful also. I I wrote so much to talk about here, but I kind of gave you the skinny. And I don't think it would make sense to go back and um and just re say the same things that I just did right um in a more concise way so i think i'm gonna leave it as that um i will leave you with some some final words even if you think you're not creative i promise you you are um look to live this life is to be creative, right? We are making up our moments to moments. We're making up our day to day. We're making up our worldview to talk about creativity in a very abstract and broad way. We're constantly creating, even if it's not a painting or a song or writing when I talk about creativity, it's not just this form of medium, right? I'm talking about our ability to relate and interact with the world around us. Um, we're not afraid of trying new things. We're not afraid of failing. And that sounds funny because I am afraid of failing, but we're not like you may be like in to some degree you are mate, right? Or like I am and you could be, but you weren't afraid to try walking or you weren't afraid to eat your first food or to take your first drink of water. Like, we're not afraid 
Otherwise, I don't think you'd be able to really interact with the world. And even if you are afraid, it didn't stop you. Um, and I think being able to try new things, I feel like it, it does, from a creative standpoint, it, it takes two things, right? It takes a form of optimistic naive, naivety. That sounds weird. It's like you're trying something, thinking it's going to work the first time. Um, I'm sure we've all felt that at one point. Or thinking it's going to work out in our favor. Or just hoping for the best. Um, that's one. And I think the second one is motivation. To do anything in life, you have to have some sort of motivation, whether it's a positive or negative perceptually type of motivation. But there has to be some form of motivation. Like there has to be a reason for you to do something. Um, so, so why creativity again? Simply because we're constantly creating. Uh, we create things from physical to abstract. We, and it, it all stems from this intricate, complex relationship between the self, the physical world, and our constructed reality. Um, just so you know, I don't pretend to know things. Anybody that knows me knows that that's one of my favorite catchphrases. I don't pretend to know things. Um, I know a little bit about a lot of things, but I don't know a lot about one thing. Um, and definitely not enough to ever call myself an expert on anything. So this podcast really is to showcase and give a platform to those who do know a lot about one thing, um, who create things and who want a place to talk about what it means to be human. Um, I have so I love music. Like I love hearing lyrics and stuff like that for people. Uh, for anybody that does know me, they know that I can sing or rap or whatever most songs um, that I, I memorize lyrics. Um, there's a song by Lil Wayne that I love. It's called uh, Nightmares of the Bottom. I don't know if he actually meant it this way, but there's a there's a lyric that he has that when I heard it, it just kind of went, right? He says, we're in the same picture, but we all got different poses. Um, and that to me is a very beautiful metaphor to who we are and what we are. We're all walking in this physical reality we're all living in the same realm, right? The same universe. But we're all walking, and we're all standing in different poses. We are all walking different paths. We all interpret um, the world differently. And only when you piece together those different versions of reality will be be able to see the big picture that picture we're all standing in will it's the only way that we'll we'll see that is by connecting those dots um so that being said i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this very embarrassing first episode i hope you enjoyed it um I hope you learned a little bit about me. And if you want to know more, ask me. If you want to be on the podcast, please reach out to me. I would love that. Um, I am 
truly humbly grateful to anybody who joined today who saw this episode and who was gonna um join me on this journey of figuring out who we are as humans who we are as creatives and how that benefits us and how that translates into our everyday life and how can we make life more meaningful um using our creativity and using this creative expression that we've been gifted with um the ability to create thanks guys thank you for joining me if you like it please share it with a friend um follow me everywhere i'm on almost every platform um be on the lookout for our friday friday i do have a mini sode i promised you i will ra i will rhythm say one of my raps <laughs> um thank you again stay creative i'll see you again next time